So definitely a different direction of migration, but even more interesting is that according to most views of the Scythian migration, they never really even got to you know, south of the Caucasus Mountains very much. I mean, there was limited invasions. For example, they invaded Palestine a couple of times. They invaded the Persian Empire a few times and different things like that. And there was some very minor settling, but, but they had very little presence south of the Caucasus Mountains in modern day Turkey. And yet Josephus says they start in southern Turkey. So either Josephus is thinking of a different people that he's calling Scythians that start around the, Tor the, the Taurus Mountains, in Turkey and then move eastward, or he does know of the Scythians and yet he just says that they are Magogians and he has just a completely wrong view about where they came from or where they were going or anything like that. I do think there is some cooperation in the Targum. So that's the other source I have listed here. The Targum is basically a Bible translation, a Hebrew Bible translation in the first century and on into the rabbinic period. It had like sermon notes and things like that in it. And it translates Magog as basically Germanica. And David Baker in the Anchor Bible Dictionary says that that's possibly Germanica in the Comagene area of the Imperum Romanium, so basically during the Roman Empire. And if we look at that on a map, you can see that where that is, is nestled right between the Taurus Mountains and the Amanus Mountains. So it's, it's the same mountain range that Josephus mentioned in relationship to where Magog started. So there's some pretty significant crossover there. It may even be, have been intentional crossover. That is to say the Targum may have known of Josephus' writings or vice versa or something like that. I'm not quite sure, but there is some crossover there. What I can say with certainty is that this is the only place that we get anything to do with the Scythians and Magog or any, any part of this at all. There are some dubious sources. For example, in Hal Lindsey's book, The Late Great Planet Earth, he quotes extensively a guy named Cumming, who seems to be like an apocalyptic preacher in the 1800s, who did misquote Pliny the Elder in saying that something to do with Magog and the Scythians or whatever, but you can look up the Pliny's quote and it's nothing like that they were saying. But in any case, it really doesn't matter because the city that they're talking about is in Turkey. But my point is that Josephus is the only link to the Scythians and Magog that we have. And it's pretty dubious because it seems as though Josephus thinks the Scythians started out in Southern Turkey, which literally no one these days thinks. So concluding with Magog, there is nothing conclusive, I think on either side, but considering that the next four nations that we're gonna look at are much more conclusive, and all of those point to the same area in Eastern Turkey, I think it's reasonable to assume for now that Magog was also near the Taurus Mountains in eastern Turkey, where Josephus and the Targum seem to converge. I do want to point out that it may be that Magog is related to the word Gog, that is the leader. So Magog could mean something like the land of Gog or something like that. Therefore, Magog may not even be a place, but a way to refer to those in the land of Gog, such as Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, and Tagarma, which might explain why there is so little evidence for Magog and there's so much evidence for all the others in terms of being a place names. But that it itself, I should say, has some problems too, because it does say the land of Magog, so it would be sort of redundant if that was true. So there are issues there too, but I just wanted to mention that before we move on. Moving on to Meshach, and here we have for the first time some early primary sources from the Akkadians and Assyrians. Akkadian sources from as early as Tiglath Pileser I in 1100 BC, they mention Meshach or Mushkaya from the land of Mushku, uh, and this also mentions their capital in East Asia Minor. They included tributes such as bronze, and actually the king of Meshach was Maida, the famous Midas, who's Midas touch turned everything to gold. So that's a pretty interesting connection. Also in Assyria, uh, Sargon II dated 709 BC says of Midas, he's the ruler of the land of Mushki and seeks a peace, peaceful relationship with the Assyrians. Map wise, and some of these maps, of course, you can't really rely on too much, but they do get pretty consistent with Meshach putting it in Eastern Turkey here and sometimes on the coast of uh, the, the southern coast of the Black Sea or the northern coast of Turkey. And you will also see it pretty consistently 
near Tiberini, which is Tubal. And of course, Meshach and Tubal are almost always mentioned together in the Bible. When they're mentioned, not just here in Ezekiel 38, but other places in the Bible, they're usually grouped together. So it's no surprise to see them grouped together on the maps as well. Moving on to the historians about Meshach, both Herodotus and Josephus agree that Meshach is in East Asia Minor. They had some, uh, uh, you know, mentioned it as the Moshi and the Tiberini and different things like that that we've been talking about. So pretty much universal agreement with regard to Meshach. I do say pretty much universal agreement because there are still some people that believe that Meshach equals Moscow, which is a view that is really quickly falling out of favor. And the reason is because there literally are no arguments for it other than, hey, they kind of sound alike. And if you think I'm being hyperbolic, go read the original sources like the Schofield Study Bible or Hal Lindsey in which this idea is mentioned, they don't give arguments for it. They just say that it is true, basically. And, you know, I guess it does sound enough and they've already convinced you that the Scythians are Russians, so it kind of makes sense. Here's an interesting rebuttal of the idea from Mark Hitchcock, who says, while the names do sound alike, this is not a proper method of identification. Meshach and Tubal are mentioned two other times in Ezekiel. In Ezekiel 27, 13, they are mentioned as trading partners with ancient Tyre. In Ezekiel 32, 26, their recent defeat is recorded. It's highly unlikely that ancient Tyre, modern Lebanon, was trading with Moscow and the Siberian city of Tobolsk. The preferred identification is that Meshach and Tubal are the ancient Moshoi and Tiborini in Greek writings, or Tabal and Musku in Assyrian inscriptions. The ancient locations are in modern Turkey. With Tubal, we again have a pretty good amount of primary-ish sources like the Akkadian texts, which mention Tabal and Muski. These are located in East Asia Minor. Herodotus mentions two nations, the Moshoi and the Tiberini, and Josephus writes of Thebal and Meshikans, both of which, again, agree are in Turkey. You can see in this map the Tiberini kind of on the more interior coast, again, sort of northern, northeastern tur Turkey, I would say. Moving on to Gomer, and Gomer is one of those that we just have so much information about. Uh, Gomer was all in the ancient world and all kinds of battles and all in this area in Turkey near the Black Sea. Gomer became Gamir in some languages, so some people called them Gamir, which became the Gamiri, which later in another language became the Kimiri, which became the Kimirians. The first record of Chimerians appears in Assyrian annals in the year 714 BC. These describe how a people termed the Gimiri helped the forces of Sargon II to defeat the kingdom of Aratu. Their original homeland called Gamir or Ushdish seemed to have been located within the buffer state of Mane. The later geographer Ptolemy placed the Chimerian city of Gomara in this region. The Assyrians recorded the migration of the Chimerians as the former people's king Sargon II was killed in the battle uh, against them while driving them from Persia in 705 BC. They're also mentioned as having run-ins in the historical record with King Midas, so Meshach, and then also Tubal. Josephus says of Gomer, I think we read this earlier, that, quote, Gomer founded those whom the Greeks now call Galatians, but were then called Gomerites. So Galatia is more central Turkey. The Chimerians was more, I would say, on the eastern side, maybe as far northeast as any of these groups went. So basically due east of the Black Sea, kind of very, very northeast Turkey, or maybe even southern Georgia is where they would have started. But then they would have migrated uh, south more into the Turkish mainland where they would have uh, run-ins with Midas, etc. Next up is another member of this northern J. Pathian cohort, and that is Beth Tagarma. And Beth just means house of, so really we're just looking for the place of Tagarma. And this is mentioned in Neo-Assyrian texts as well as Hittite texts. Uh, in Assyrian, it was Tilgarimu. In Hittite, it was Ter Tergarma. In any case, they have a modern city of Gurun, I think is where they put that as a kind of epicenter. But it should be noted that there is a tradition, as you know, with Christian theologians like Jerome, as well as people like Josephus, that put it more west in Turkey. They say that Tagarma is regarded as the father of the Phrygians, which is kind of more west Turkey, but still firmly in Turkey. And of course, I'm sure there was a great deal of migration. By the time Josephus's day, he may have genuinely known these people to be related to Tagarma, but they may have had their uh, start further east or something like that, or vice versa. Now that we're done with that northern group, it's going to get a lot easier 
And the first example is Persia, which there is, as far as I know, literally no controversy about. It is basically modern day Iran to the east of Israel. So I'm not even going to quote sources on that one. The next one, Kush, also doesn't have a lot of controversy, but I will read a little bit about it. Uh, this again is from the Yale Anchor Bible Dictionary. The north border of Kush during Egypt's early dynasties lay between the first and second cataracts of the Nile, but by the time of the Old Testament had been pushed as far south as the fourth cataract, Kush extended deep into east-central Africa, but its southern borders were never sharply delineated. From the Roman period onward, the region was commonly known as Nubia and apparently compromised much of what today are the Sudan and are, are Sudan and Ethiopia, also known as Absinthia. So, you know, there it is, south of Egypt, kind of on the western border of the Red Sea. The next one, Put, is usually equated with modern Libya, although it is a little bit debated as to exactly where in those borders you should put Put. And uh, it's mentioned in the old Persian and Babylonian records and things like that. It, there's just a little bit of question as far as how much you slide it one way or the other. But generally speaking, universally agreed to be in or around Libya. Moving on to Sheba and Dedan. And I put these in orange in my map, and that's because they are not explicitly said to attack or try to attack Israel in this narrative. They're asking questions, are you going to attack? And same thing with the merchants of Tarshish. So I'm not entirely sure they're even a part of this. They may just be bystanders, essentially aghast at the idea of attacking Israel. In terms of their geographical location, Sheba seems to be associated with the southwest corner of the Arabian Peninsula. This area is known in native sources as Saba, S-A-B-A, -A, and they have had an advanced culture, an advanced culture from the early first century BC and perhaps even earlier. Dedan is also pretty well known, even down to the ruins of it. There's ruins in Saudi Arabia called K-H-U are a Kurayaba, just to the north of the modern village of Al Ula in the Hijaz. And it gives some coordinates here. Uh, and the point I'm trying to make here is that we pretty much know exactly where Dedan is and pretty much where Sheba is as well. The last one before we get to Rosh anyway, is the Merchants of Tarshish. And this is a little bit of a rabbit trail when you start to read through it. And I'm not sure how important it is because it does just mention the merchants of Tarshish. So they're not, it's not the nation itself. Now, Tarshish, a lot of people have uh, assumed it was in Spain. And then there is a whole group of people that think it's actually North Africa and Carthage. And then there's some people that think maybe there's a reason to associate both Carthage and Spain and maybe even some of the Greek Isles. Maybe they are... Phoenician derivative people that were ship faring and therefore had lots of ports that they called home. I don't know what the reason for the confusion with Tarshish is. I'm sure I could figure it out, but I just didn't determine that it was particularly important. Number one, because it was just the merchants and number two, um, they weren't even attackers in this, just bystanders. All right, if you've been waiting patiently for me to get to Rosh, I applaud you for waiting this long. And Rosh, I didn't mention it as a nation because I don't think it is a nation. I know in some Bible translations, they translate it that way as if Rosh is just another city like Magog or Meshach or Tubal. But the vast majority of Bible translations do not translate it Rosh, but rather translate it as the word chief mostly. So for example, in the ESV in Ezekiel 38 two, it says, son of man, set your face toward Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. So here the idea is that, that Gog from the land of Magog is the chief prince of Meshach, Tubal. And that's because the word Rosh in Hebrew is translated as chief or first or leader. Literally, I think it means head. And so it's used in the term Rosh Hashanah, which is a celebration to celebrate the first of the year. I think it literally there means the head of the year. So Rosh Hashanah means the head of the year. And so it's translated as chief here, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, whereas the New King James translates it literally as the word Rosh, as if it is a place name. So son of man, set your face against God, the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. So are we dealing with a chief prince or just a prince of Rosh 
and Meshach and Tubal. And I think this will be more important when we get to who Gog is later on. I think this has some utility there. But for now, I think it's a little bit over my head in one sense. I've read the arguments in Hebrew.